Hi, welcome back. We are talking about a very particular topic today, as you can tell from the title, and that topic is forehead lines, smile lines, and just overall fine lines and wrinkles uh, in general. And so I've been wanting to do a video like this for a while. I was just trying to think of the best way to compose it. And I feel as makeup lovers and beauty lovers, and if you're watching this video right now, I'm just gonna assume you like makeup to some extent. The problem is that not all products are created equally for skin that may have more pronounced lines. Not all application techniques are created equally for skin types that have uh, wrinkles or fine lines. So I really wanted to create this video to help some of you out who have those particular areas that you feel you just haven't been able to find products that are compatible with your particular skin texture. And a big reason for me doing this also is because I want to show you very quickly uh, what my forehead lines used to look like when I first started making videos on YouTube. Uh, most certainly you cannot get rid of wrinkles or any type of fine line in the skin unless you have some type of Botox or filler done. And the irony in that is that I used to get so many comments about how pronounced my forehead lines were. And that was a big self-conscious point for me. And now, as I'm making videos almost 10 years later, I'm getting comments from people asking if I've had Botox, if I had fillers on my forehead. And the answer to that is no, I am terrified of needles. I have not had any type of work done on my face or my, bo my body in general, if we wanna go that far. Um, I've really just implemented these techniques and these products into my routine and they have made such a huge difference uh, in those areas that I felt very self-conscious about. So uh, I, I wanna break this down as swiftly as possible and uh, let's, just, let's just go ahead and jump into it. So the first thing I want to talk about I feel is the most crucial and I feel it's also the biggest culprit in the enhancement of any type of pronounced line in the skin and that's not wearing the proper base or foundation for your particular skin type which in this case is obviously going to be either mature or just any skin type that has uh, pronounced lines. So I have a video called Why Your Foundation Does Not Look Good and in that video I talk about how I categorize foundations in three different categories, thin, medium, and thick textured foundations. So without elaborating too much on those three categories, I just wanna run over them briefly so you can have a better understanding if you have not watched that video. Uh, I talk about thin, medium, and thick texture foundations. Thin foundations are almost always the best route to go if you have any type of scarring, indentation, fine line, wrinkle in the skin because those are generally more water-based uh, products. They have not only a thinner feel, but when you apply them on the skin, you're just gonna notice that they have a lot of flexibility. They also generally don't contain a ton of pigment, which comes into play, and I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, so with your medium and your thicker textured foundations, those not only are going to have a thicker feel to them, but they are going to contain a lot more pigment. So the issue with the pigment and the thicker texture is that when you have creasing in the skin, that is what gets caught down and it just sinks down into any type of pore or crease that it can find. And that's what you see at the end of the day when you look at your makeup and every single line in your skin is pronounced. It really doesn't have anything to do with just the overall foundation. It's the amount of pigment and the overall texture that the foundation has. Uh, so the reason I so highly suggest looking into thin textured foundation products is because they do not contain the vast amount of pigment that medium and thick uh, textured foundations have. And for that reason, you will get a really nice, just smooth overall even finish on your skin. And then at the end of the day, when you, you know, things have worn off, things obviously are going to sink down in the skin by the end of the day, it's inevitable. 
but it's not going to be as noticeable. It's not going to look as crepey. It's not going to look as muddled. And overall, I feel that it's better to have just more of a sheer undone finish at the end of the day, as opposed to something that looks like it's melted and crepey you know, just sunken down into the skin. So I wanna talk about a few of my favorite thin textured foundations. The number one that I will always recommend first is MAC Face and Body. I have talked about this from day one on my channel. If I had to pick a foundation to wear for the rest of my life, it would be MAC Face and Body. It has the truest uh, representation of a thin texture foundation that I can think of off the top of my head. It's very forgiving. Um, I do know that some of you just, you know, you don't get down with this, so I have a few other recommendations. Cushion foundations are really good ones to look into. They often, again, contain a high water percentage. The pigment is not as heavily uh, packed into these formulas. And I think that the, just overall, they generally give a really nice youthful appearance. Um, anything like a skin tint. This is the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint. I often talk about the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Skin Tint. Love that one. Uh, something like this is also a really good representation of a thin textured foundation. I think it's also important to understand that you cannot physically cover a line or an indentation in the skin. And I talk about this a little bit more in my Pores 101 video, which I will link down below. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there. I, I mentioned this was gonna be my longest talking point because I truly do believe that it's important to understand what the culprits are in your foundation that are causing your fine lines and your wrinkles to be more pronounced. So the second talking point I wanna talk about is more of an application mistake, and I am going to call it a mistake because I truly believe that if you do have pronounced lines in these areas, this application technique is a mistake, and that's applying your concealer to number one, the smile line area, and I'll be honest, I was guilty of this for several years. I would just see people on YouTube, you know, apply a ton of concealer around the smile lines, and I'd be like, hmm, yeah, makes sense. Just cover up anywhere that you could possibly think of putting concealer. If you think about it, you generally don't get a ton of breakouts in the smile line area. The only thing that I think is super valid for applying concealer in that area is if you have discoloration. I know it is pretty common for a lot of people to have discoloration around the mouth, around the smile line area. Totally understand that. But if you have nothing to cover around the smile lines, let's just let's just forget concealer should even go there because in my opinion it should not it's only adding more layers to the areas that have more pronounced lines and ultimately they're just going to end up looking more crepey they're going to end up looking uh, more noticeable by the end of the day so we're going to cut the application of concealer in that little you know smiley shape around the smile lines it just it, it doesn't make any sense the second area that is a big no-no, and this is again something that took me a little while to figure out, is the forehead. You know, it used to be like super popular, and I mean, I still see a ton of people doing it. Um, putting like the little X mark of concealer on the forehead. Why, why are we doing this? So now with my particular application style, not only do I avoid applying concealer to my forehead, unless I have maybe a bump or two, then I'll spot conceal. Uh, but it also goes with my foundation, my bronzer, my setting powder. I try to apply as little product as possible on my forehead because that is where, in my opinion, my lines are the most pronounced. More product in that area, again, just equals more creasage at the end of the day. The third thing I wanna talk about is primer. And most of you know, if you're familiar with my channel, I only advocate for primer when necessary. And I truly think that one of the most necessary cases is when you have more pronounced lines. There are so many primer formulas out there that can help. And what they essentially do is create a barrier uh, along the top of those indented areas. And it'll just prevent your makeup from slipping down into uh, your creased areas. 
as quickly. It's not going to prevent it just totally by the end of the day. Again, you still probably are going to notice that some product has sunken down into the lines, but what the primer does is it essentially just kind of creates a nice smooth barrier over those areas. So I have a couple I want to talk about. The first is one that I've been using for years and I just don't talk about it a lot on my channel. I, I don't really understand why, but I've been using this bad boy for years and it's the NARS Instant Line and Pore Perfector. So it does not look like a traditional primer. It's this little tiny priming stick. And the reason I love this is because you can absolutely go in and target those smile lines. You can go in and you can target those particular lines that you have on your skin as opposed to just having to put it all over the face in areas where you may not really need it. Uh, this is such a handy guy if you do have um, especially more pronounced lines along the smile line area. That's where I love using it uh, and I do use it on my forehead as well. I kind of just reserve it for days when I want my makeup to look ultra smooth uh, but it it is something that I personally believe adds such a soft like blurred finish to the skin. Another one is uh, the Tatcha uh, Silk Canvas Primer. This one has a lovely filling texture. Ultimately what you just want to look for are kind of just like those traditional silicone filling primers. The ones that feel nice and blurring, really lightweight and feathery. The Smashbox Original Primer is a really good one to look into. They also have, I think it's their Pore Minimizing Primer. It's the one that's in the purple tube. Love that, used it for years. Actually used it on my wedding day, on my forehead lines, and I, I just feel it made such a difference. So finding those right formulas that are capable of providing just that small barrier for a small amount of time on the skin I can really help out. So number four is basically finding your perfect powder. And I know you're like, okay, well, what is that? This is something that will take you, it's a trial and error process. It's kind of like finding your perfect foundation. A powder can truly make or break the base that you've put down. So even if you've put down a really nice soft focus finish base, if your powder counteracts that, it's kind of going to be pointless. So I would really encourage you to start looking for powders that not only have reviews from people in your age group, but people who are also dealing with the same issues that you might be dealing with. Uh, I do have, it's very hard to recommend one powder for all particular skin types, um, but I do have a couple that I want to talk about. The first is actually one I've only been using for about four or five months now, and it's the RMS Beauty Tinted Un Powder. This is truly one of the most blurring powders I have found to date. Uh, and generally, I'm, I generally would lean more towards a pressed powder, but something about this formula is so ultra blurring and soft focus on the skin. When I use this in a video for the first time, I think the camera caught my first reaction and the first thing I said was, wow, this powder is so incredibly blurring. And it's just, it's unbelievable like the advancements that uh, makeup has in powders and in primers. That's why I'm really encouraging you to step out and go to Sephora, ask for a couple samples of different powders that you might be interested in and just see how they work with uh, your base and the products that you have that you're already happy with. But uh, the RMS one, I truly love. I really also love the Fenty uh, filter powder, pro filter powder. That one's really nice and gives a nice soft uh, effect to the skin. I'm just going to have a, a list down below of products that you can look into if you don't know where to start. That way I'm not sitting here forever talking about each one that I might possibly recommend. <laughs> okay, those were the four things that I wanted to talk about today. I know they might seem pretty standard, but I also feel like some of the things uh, I've talked about, you know, it doesn't always cross everyone's mind. We come home, we watch a YouTube video, we see a product that looks good on someone, and then we want it for ourselves, and ultimately sometimes it isn't the best product for our skin type. The whole product process of makeup in general is trial and error. And so these were just some things I wanted to lay out. If you feel you struggle uh, with fine lines and wrinkles, these are four things that 
uh, not only I came to realize helped me, but ultimately I feel could also help a lot of you all as well. So um, if you have any questions for me, leave them down below. I'm gonna have all reference videos and products listed down below as well. Let me know if you have some favorite products for combating uh, fine lines and wrinkles in the skin. I would love to know down below as well. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.